Good afternoon. I am Ben Ayers, Dean of the Terry College of Business, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you, students, family, friends, honored guests, to the 2016 Terry Graduation Convocation. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of this class of Terry graduates. All Terry students should be proud. Terry's admissions requirements are rigorous. Our curriculum is challenging. We encourage students to think creatively, to improve their communication skills, and to take advantage of opportunities to connect with the business community. Graduates who follow this advice will have a distinct advantage as they embark on their careers. Out of 1,500 business schools in the country, our undergraduate and graduate programs are routinely ranked among the nation's best. Currently, six of our undergraduate and graduate programs are ranked in the top 15 among all schools. And we are one of the nation's leading public business schools in Wall Street placements. Our faculty are nationally recognized for their research, and our students boast the highest CPA pass rate in the nation. It is truly great to be a part of the Terry College. This is a milestone year for Terry. While the college has educated business students for over 100 years, this year we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the naming of the college in honor of Terry alumni C. Herman Terry and his wife, Mary Virginia. This year is also the 50th anniversary of the first two African-American students to graduate from the Terry College. Tyrone Barnett, who was a finance major, as well as Harold Black, an economics major. Both went on to very successful careers, and indeed, Harold Black received Terry's Distinguished Alumni Award in 1986. Regarding our programs, this is the first year that we are graduating students from two fully online programs, our Masters of Internet Technology and our online BBA. We are also completing the first year of the Terry Women's Initiative, a program that strives to inspire in our students the confidence needed to achieve both their academic and personal goals. This year also marks the first year of the operation of the university-wide certificate program in entrepreneurship, which is housed in Terry and served the university under the leadership of Terry College alumnus Bob Pinckney. Finally, our MBA programs continue to meet the needs of the global business community with three newly established dual degree programs. We can all be proud of Terry's academic success. Graduates, your program has helped develop the perspective, the skills, and confidence to contribute effectively and ethically as leaders. Your success is very important to the Terry College. The reputation of the Terry College is built upon the accomplishments of our graduates. The Terry College is indeed a very special place. It's a community comprised of outstanding students and a caring and dedicated faculty, staff, and alumni. As a community, we have all been heartbroken by the tragic car accident that claimed the lives of four university students, including Terry student Hallie Scott and critically injuring another Terry student, Agnes Kim. Please keep Agnes in your thoughts and in your prayers and join me in a moment of silence to remember Kayla Canedo, Brittany Feldman, Christina Samara, and Hallie Scott. Thank you. 
I would now like to introduce our platform party. Please stand as you are introduced and remain standing. Audience, if you will please hold your applause until the entire platform party has been introduced. Terry Brown, who is our alumni representative with us today. Randy Grooms, the Director of Diversity Relations. David Barbie, the Director of the Music Business Program. Laura Little, the Director of the Institute for Leadership Advancement. Bob Pinckney, the Director of the Entrepreneurship Program. Laura Clark, Director of the Undergraduate Program. Craig Piercy, Director of the Masters of Internet Technology. Shantanu Chatterjee, Director of the Full-Time MBA. Charlotte Mason, Head of the Department of Marketing. Marique Boudreau, Head of the Department of Management Information Systems. Bob Vandenberg, Head of the Department of Management. Rob Hoyt, Head of the Department of Insurance, Legal Studies, and Real Estate. Chris Cornwell, Head of the Department of Economics. Ted Christensen, Director of the Toll School of Accounting. Henry Munnicke, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs. Marisa Pagnatero, Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Programs. And today's keynote speaker, Jeff Dunn, President of Campbell Fresh, a division of Campbell Soup Company. And Jeff Netter, Head of the Department of Finance. You can forget. <laughs> Thank you. In addition to the professors on stage, there are a number of Terry faculty that are here today. These professors are among the top educators and scholars in the country. Our students have benefited greatly from interacting with and learning from them. Will all faculty please stand and be recognized? We are honored to have Jeff Dunn with us today as our convocation speaker, a consumer strategist at heart and a proponent of values-based leadership. Jeff has led companies, large and small, to grow through brand and marketing innovation. As president of Campbell Fresh, Jeff is in charge of building the company's scale and accelerating the growth in its packaged fresh market. The Seafresh division includes Bolthouse Farms, Campbell's Retail Fresh Soup Unit, and Garden Fresh Gourmet. Jeff's mastery of marketing innovation was cultivated during two decades at Coca-Cola, where he oversaw all businesses in North and South America. While serving as president of the California-based Bolthouse Farms, Jeff was true to his commitment of making healthy foods more accessible and affordable. His successful campaign to encourage Americans to eat baby carrots like junk food earned national acclaim. Jeff earned his bachelor's degree in business from the Terry College, University of Georgia in 1980, and an MBA in management from Pepperdine. He serves on the board of directors a Produce Marketing Association, and Herbalife. He received the Terry College Distinguished Alumni Award in 2003. Jeff has two sons. In fact, his son Parker today is earning his MBA. <laughs> Jeff lives in Los Angeles with his wife, Jessica. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Dunn. Thank you, Dean Ayers, and uh, welcome, Bulldog Nation. I'm incredibly proud to be here with all of you today. And the way I want to start this talk is to run the time machine back 15 years. And if you remember 2001, probably many of you students don't, but I do, was an interesting year. A lot happened that year. But a couple of things happened in 2001. The first iPod was launched. The first Xbox was launched. The first Harry Potter movie was in theaters. And, exactly. And 
I had a job at a company uh, south of here in Atlanta called the Coca-Cola Company running the Americas, which was North and South America. And back then, when Terry College and the University of Georgia probably wasn't in any of your sights, I would uh, work hard every day down in Atlanta trying to figure out how to grow the sales of Coca-Cola around the world. And at a point of rapid globalization, we were very uh, focused, to say the least, on, on growing our sales, as I'm sure Coca-Cola is today. One country in particular that's been in the news a lot was a place we had focused, which is Brazil. And we particularly focused in Rio de Janeiro. And what's critical to understand about uh, Rio at that point is it really isn't the uh, kind of just ready for prime time place that's going to be featured in the Olympics in uh, just three months away. But there's another part of Rio I want to talk about today. Now, you may have heard the term favelas, which, which are the uh, slums, basically, of Rio and other cities in Brazil. These are shanty towns, uh, really difficult environments in which to live, over, overpopulated, uh, very poor folks, living together in makeshift homes, put together with scraps of wood, cinder block, and sheet metal. Plumbing and electricity is not available in most of those homes. And if it is, it's jerry-rigged. Athens, Georgia, this is not, I promise you. The favelas were and remain crowded, unsanitary, with very poor nutrition. They're dangerous places. Yet, the thing about Coke that's amazing is Coke looks at every place as an opportunity. And we were working hard to figure out how to sell more Coke, smaller packages, things of that type. And so I spent a lot of time there thinking about that question. And I was out with the team and we were walking through the favelas and it was uh, a particularly uh, hellish area to say the least. And, and I had um, what I'm gonna use uh, for today uh, the term, I had a millennial moment. And I'm a big millennial fan. I've, I've got a couple that, uh, a Andrew and, and Parker, but, but there's something about what I term the millennial moment for me. A voice that maybe I had ignored for too long in my head, let's call him Jeff, speaking to Mr. Dunn, the president of Coke Americas. Jeff said, Mr. Dunn, I have a question for you. And I literally stopped in my tracks and I said, who's in my head? And he said, what are you doing here? What's your purpose? What is this about? I get selling more Coke. That's pretty clear. But these folks, they need a lot of things. And there's nothing wrong with a Coke. Everybody likes a Coke. Some of you undergrads might w remember that first Coke after that first weekend, you know, when you got up and needed a little liquid refreshment. I see you can relate to that comment. And no one doesn't enjoy a Coke, but what they needed was a lot of other things. And from that question, for me at least, grew out living my life through this question about what's my purpose? Why am I here? How do I apply the gifts and talents that all of you have and that I've been given to make a difference in the world? And as I stand here today, I realize millennials as a generation would have already known what that is. You, the graduates of this incredible university, my alma mater, you are future business leaders, thought leaders, you proud millennials, civic-minded, purpose-driven, motivated both by personal gain. I'm a capitalist, I get it, but greater societal need you would have already known that. Purpose is the most defining characteristic of your generation. And the very reasons why you, this millennial generation, are changing the face of business as we know it. It's because you have decided that the purpose gap, the gap between what is being delivered by business and what in your heart you know should be delivered is shrinking. The difference between what you want out of business as both an employee and a consumer and a member of society and what business 
brings to all of us in society, which is incredibly important, is being shrunk. Fifteen years ago, it took my millennial moment, there smack in the middle of that desperate place, for me to press not just my friends at Coke, but more importantly, myself, to do better for the people I serve. Fast forward and today, more than ever, there's a growing alignment between the trajectory of business as it progresses towards purpose beyond profit and the collective ideals of this next generation who are going to represent in 10 years 75% of the world's workforce. You all, 75%. You have an incredible opportunity to accelerate that change and move the needle. Purpose is, and I believe will continue to be, your calling card generationally. But how to best leverage that and carry on the profound cultural change that will make the corporate world? Strike that. The world. A better place. A better place to live, a better place to work, and ultimately to take on many of the challenges that face us as the human race. So here's the good news. With your freshly minted thousands, I hear, of diplomas going to be given out today, all of you are uniquely primed for that game, that action to close that purpose gap, to bring to the businesses you choose to put your energies to that sensibility. And we need it. There's much to do. A recent Deloitte survey is not surprising, to me at least, saying 87% of millennials believe the success of a business should be measured by much more than its pure financial performance. That's not to suggest your anti-profit, your professors and the faculty and the staff and everyone who works at Terry College would walk out of here with a tear in their eye if I left you with that message. Profit's good. But how do you create profit? How do you create the balance between short-term profit and long-term benefit to society? The answer's clear, and the answer's awesome. You associate yourself in those things you buy, in those places you bring your energies. You associate with companies that are doing that in a way that resonates with you. You associate it with companies that are making a difference. And through those associations, through that voting with your heart and your wallet, you create that change. You close the purpose gap. I see it each and every day in my job running Seafresh at the Campbell Soup Company, a 150-year-old company that's in the middle of reinventing itself, morphing itself from a typical big food brand company to a business laser focused on consumer health, nutrition, well-being. And we're walking the talk. We were the first large company to come out and say we would nationally label GMOs on all of our products. The government was taking a little too long for us. We decided that that was just the right thing to do. We've acquired a number of good for you food companies, including mine. We put significant resources behind public interest campaigns working with the First Lady on incenting and creating the motivations for all of us to eat healthier, especially kids in underserved communities, to make better lifestyle and diet choices, eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, starting with carrots. And I'm really proud of that. And if you question whether purpose is as important as, pro as profit, Today, the Campbell Soup Company's stock price is at an all-time high. For 10 years, while they pursued a different strategy, the stock price didn't move, and in the last three years, it's doubled, creating almost $10 billion of incremental value, driven not from trying to create more profits, but to bring our purpose to life. So here's a takeaway. Don't, for a minute, for a second, for a nanosecond, shy away from planning purpose front and center on your radar screens as you walk out of here today. Whether you're evaluating a prospective employer, flexing your entrepreneurial muscles, true to your millennial roots, foster it, embrace it, fly 
your purpose flag. Embrace the importance of what this means, not to just you as a person in the business community, but to all of us. Force the hands of all business to be more responsive to the broader needs of humanity. I can't tell you how excited I am for all of you. Each of you has been given a tremendous gift by this university. You're blessed with unique life skills and experiences that bring you to the table of commerce. That combined with your unique generational sensibility, your passion, your creativity translates into possibilities that are truly endless. So before me, I see so many incredible faces, so many budding leaders and entrepreneurs. And as Dean Ayers said, my son Parker James, PJ, to his friends and enemies alike, he, uh, he's graduating today and I couldn't be prouder of him. And as proud as I am of him, I'm as proud of each of you. To you, the graduates of 2016 at my beloved University of Georgia, I implore you to run, don't walk, with your purpose flying into the trenches of business. And don't ever lose sight of it. It's easy sometimes to lose sight of it. But as long as you keep it front and center, as long as it's your true north, and you're clear, and it takes work to get clear, your life, your business career, your impact will be much greater than you can ever imagine. So congratulations, and thanks for having me. Thank you, Jeff, for what a powerful message regarding purpose. We are extremely proud of our 2016 graduates and proud of you as well. Thank you for all that you have done for the Terry College, the University of Georgia, and your community. Thank you.